Hey guys, so it looks like we did made some changes to the actual order of things. So it looks like this is um, going to be the second part of Thursday's lesson instead of Wednesday's lesson. All right, so the first half of this video should have been, or the first half of this lesson should have been going through the wave spring activity, where um, you learn just the basics to, uh, through that simulation I was doing about the um, transverse waves and reflection of waves and trying to get a standing wave going. So we're going to actually, this note is going to get into more details about those. So I know we just touched on them in that activity. Now you're going to get the details about uh, all these different topics that you can see here. Wave interference, uh, reflection and transmission of waves, phase shift, and standing waves. Okay, let's get right into it. We're starting with wave interference. Uh, as we saw in the previous wave spring activity, when wave pulses intersect with one another, or sorry, with other wave pulses along the same medium, their energies combine either constructively or destructively. Okay. So let's just make a quick little sketch. I know you already did this one, but we'll show the, um, the two pulses on the same side and the two pulses on opposite sides. Don't forget this super this super crest. That should have been more in the middle. Let me redraw that. This super crest is the same width as both of those pulses, but twice the height because the energies are combining on each other. Okay, and then they go along their merry way. They they go over each other, and then the next frame, if we could see that, you'd have the waves going uh, continuing on in the opposite directions. This one with the crest meeting the trough. You get for a split second complete destructive interference. All right, I just went quickly through that because you already have that in your notes from the very previous activity. I think in previous years I've done I've done this in a separate um, on a separate day. Okay, but now we can get into different shapes of waves. So with electronic means, you can actually have uh, triangle type shapes. Um, I'm going to erase this, but I just want to show you. you can have like, you know, triangular waves. You can have what's called a sawtooth wave. Um, there's a bunch of different ones. You can have square waves. Okay, don't copy that down, but then just to show you, there's a bunch of different uh, electronically generated waves that can that can mimic different shapes. Doesn't always have to be that nice, you know, uh, half sine wave pulse. All right, so let's do a couple examples. So the constructive and destructive interference still holds true regardless. Okay, so let's look at um, a square wave meeting a triangle wave. Okay, example number one. So when those two meet, we're going to do the, the overlap, and then we're going to do as they move past each other. Okay, so when those two meet, you get the square wave with the triangle hat on top of it. They drew a little house, lovely. Okay, and then the next second, or uh, the next instant in time, as they continue on, you get the triangle wave continuing on. They don't reflect off each other, that's kind of a misconception. The triangle wave continues to move to the right. All right. So even if we break this one, the second one down, okay, they're still moving in opposite directions. So the triangle wave still moves to the left, and the uh, square wave still moves to the right. All right, let's do one where we've got destructive interference. Let's do a circle wave and, um, or sorry, not a circle wave, sorry, a, a regular wave with a, um, an upside down uh, square wave. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm going to do, 
Oh, I said circle wave, a regular wave on the left hand side. And that's going to meet an inverted square wave. All right, so this is just visualiza uh, visualization, just playing with shapes, how they overlap. So when they overlap, what you'd end up with is something that's a little weird looking. So in the middle, you'd have what starts to be the uh, the regular looking wave or sinusoidal type wave, and then it would drop down and be knock a, a notch out of it with a square wave, and then it would continue on. Okay, so that's an example of destructive interference, but not complete destructive interference, because the uh, square wave is just kind of being superimposed on top of the regular looking wave. Okay, and then in the next instance, they, they continue on their merry way. Okay. So if you need to pause this for a second and finish copying that, that's fine. I'm just going to keep moving on. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is wave reflection. Again, this is something that we saw just briefly in the activity uh, with the simulation. And now we're going to do uh, more formally. So we've already seen how waves reflect from a fixed or free end. When waves or pulses encounter a fixed end to a meet, oh, free end, wait, hold on. Fixed end first, that's right. Okay, so when they encounter a fixed end, the reflected wave is inverted. Right, I'm just going to redraw the diagram of that. Okay, so that's to symbolize fixed end. So when the wave comes back or rebounds off of it, it's inverted. And it's going this way. All right, so when you, a wave, when the end of the medium is fixed, it can't move up and down, the inverted pulse is, uh, is upside down. All right, now the other uh, option for the end of a, um, a medium is ha having it, uh, it it's a, called a free end. It's free to move up and down. I don't know why it means such a big blank. The reflected wave is not inverted or non-inverted. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. So this one, again, it looks like um, a loop to simulate the, uh, the free end. And that reflected wave is also on the top side. Any questions? So, OK, uh, wave transmission. When waves or pulses travel from one medium to a different medium, oh, we're getting a little tricky now. Okay, so now we're going from one different type of um, substance that can carry a wave to another type of substance that can carry a wave. Uh, the speed of the wave changes depending on the type of substance that the wave is going through. Um, in general, the wave pulse will travel faster through a denser medium. All right, so if I'm yelling underwater, it's going to go a lot faster than me yelling in air, the sound pulse that is. If I um, bang onto a, a bang a steel pipe, the sound is going to transfer through the steel pipe even faster than it would travel through the water, and then faster than it would travel through the air. All right, the density of the uh, of the medium uh, really affects the, the velocity of the wave as it travels through that medium. 
The only exception to this, as you learned in grade 10 optics, is that electromagnetic waves like light They behave in the opposite fashion, so they slow down when traveling through a more dense medium. All right, light going through glass or diamond is going to be a lot slower than light traveling through the air. We deal mostly in this unit with mechanical waves. Okay, so you can really just uh, think of waves as traveling faster through denser mediums. When waves encounter the boundary or the interface, that's a fancy name for boundary. The transmission of energy is never 100% efficient. Okay, just like nothing in the real world is 100% efficient. Some of the wave energy is reflected back into the original medium. But the nature of the reflection, as we're going to see in the next page, the nature of the reflection depends on the type of, uh, type of media that it's going into. If the waves are traveling from a faster, oh, sorry, slower, to a faster medium, the reflected part of the wave behaves like a free end. And it reflects on the same side as the instant wave. The part of the pulse that's transmitted into the second medium is always on the same side as the incident pulse. OK, let's see this as an example. All right, I'm going to do left side, right side instead of top and bottom. So here's my incident pulse. Okay, you've got three words here that I, I'm going to throw around and I haven't given you formal definitions for. So I'll just label them. All right, this is called an incident pulse. All right. And let's make the green uh, be, the, be a faster medium. I think green means go. And I'm just going to leave the medium there for now because we're just sending a pulse into the uh, towards it. So now afterwards, after it, after the pulse actually goes into the medium, the second medium, here's what we end up with. We end up with a really small reflected pulse. Reflected pulse, and we end up with a longer, a more, more elongated um, transmitted pulse. And the reason that it's elongated is because, well, quite simply, it's a faster medium, so the wave or the, the pulse spreads out as it moves through that faster medium. And we call this one the transmitted pulse. All right. So notice that the reflected pulse, even though it's smaller, is on the same side as the incident pulse. What's going to happen if we do it backwards, if we're going from a a uh, fast medium to a slow medium, what we're going to see is that the interface behaves like a fixed end and inverts the reflected pulse. That's going to be the next section. Again, pause it if you need to. Here we go. If the waves are traveling, so this is the opposite case, so from a faster to a slower medium, the reflected, uh oh, I forgot to change these values. Sorry, this should be more dense. This should be less dense. Sorry about that. The reflected part of the wave behaves like a fixed end and reflects on the opposite side. And so I'm going to do a similar diagram as what we had above, except this one I'm going to start with the green. Now, 
Now, when that pulse um, travels into the slower medium, let's talk about the reflected pulse first. It's going to be a smaller pulse, uh, but it's going to be opposite. It's going to be inverted. Actually, I should make that the same width, but less amplitude. Okay, same width, but less amplitude. And then the pulse that goes into the slower medium is going to be squished. And the reason for that is because it slows down as it goes into the uh, slower medium. Okay, so we have an inverted reflected pulse. Label that. And a compressed transmitted pulse. All right, again, it's a good time to pause it if you need to finish copying this note down. All right, this is actually a 16 minute note so far, so uh, I'm going to wrap this one up. We're going to go to a different video to finish up this note. Let me just read the learning point. Notice that the wavelength of the pulse widens in fast mediums and shrinks in slow mediums. If we're dealing with oscillating waves, the frequency of the oscillations will actually remain constant through any change of medium. All right. So that means that the, uh, the frequency of the wave doesn't change as it travels through the me different media, only the wavelength and the velocity. And I will wrap this one up now. So we're going to move on. Still on Thursday, we're going to move on to the next video.